Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we now officially have an artist rendition of XXX Your Mom Slayer 69's profile picture, and I'm so glad we have it. It's awesome! Welcome to the Metal Robot Reviews channel. I'm your host, Tom McKay. Eternal Struggle is a hardcore band from Israel. Yes, that is real. Look, I know what's been going on there the past few weeks and what has transpired there, but to avoid a flame war in the comments, how about we all remind ourselves that God is dead, let me use eternal, taxation is death, black lives matter, and there are no guarantees in life. Anyways, the band formed in 09 and have been chugging like a college frat boy who doesn't know his own limits ever since. All right, let's chuck some more bitches! And they've gained some recognition since then too, having performed all over the country, touring, and have even managed to find themselves at Vakken Open Air back in 2017. And if anything, the video stated the blunt obvious. If you're hoping for a hall sponsorship, there's only one way to go about it. We are the eternal struggle from the old art district of Israel! Huh. So that's what Tom Mariah sounds like when you strap a crab to his testicles. But four years after that, the band has now come out with a new album, Year of the Gun, which is, as far as I can tell, the band's first official full-length album. How does it sound? Well, let's not waste much more time. Let's get straight into it. Stuff. Whoa, 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 dude, dude, dude! Hey, that's up. What the fuck are you doing? You're supposed to be reacting to the album for the fucking review. What are you doing? Well, I'm having a good fucking time, man. You want to join me? Cause I'm having pretty funny hat. I could really use some help with this one. Mm -hmm. Wow, God really is dead. Holy shit. What is with the robot? Is it? Are you drunk? What? Do you have a, a rhyme or reason for any of this shit? Eat my fucking circus. Okay, whatever. All right. Well, I guess we're going old school here. So, let's talk about Year of the Gun. Every day we wake up to the same ugly picture of a broken society eating each other up in a. So, starting from the beginning, we learn pretty quickly that these guys hate the pandemic as well. Before jumping into what I think a lot of people really came to this album for to fuck shit up more than Motley Crue on PCP. And when you get into it, the first thing you notice is that these songs are not only shorter than my ex-girlfriend's patience, but they're also ensuring that you hear every aspect of the band. The bass is loud, the drums are about to explode, much like the vocalist's head, and the guitars... exist. Honestly, I think the only purpose for the guitars is to avoid bass jokes. Cause those haven't gotten old, eh? Justice for Jason! We want bass! Lars sucks! And that's just starting off with the first two tracks, Manifesto and Point One. From there we move on to uh, the title track, which is very similar to Point One. But then we move on to As Yours Fade, which is also very similar to Point One. Huh. Yeah, that's one of the big things about the hardcore genre that's very detrimental to it. Despite being loud and tough and larger than Axl Rose's ego, it's very much the same thing throughout the entirety of an album. Nothing really ever changes. It's like Groundhog Day, but with cargo pants and Bud Light. To be fair, they did bring in some black metal broken chords into the title track to spice things up a little bit, just like Vark Vickness was trying to spice up his community. But even with that, there's still more crabs in the first four songs in a Red Lobster Kitchen. But of course, me being a critic, it would not be fair of me to just stop after four songs, declare Sin Anger 2 Electric Boogaloo, then sign off to go join the Dimitrescu Simp Train. So I decided to keep on listening to the album, hoping that something would eventually pique my interest, something would eventually change. So track six comes on. Gosh, you see now one coming. Hardcore's more predictable than Dragon Ball power scaling. Look, the album has some super strong powerhouses songs that are guaranteed to start a mosh pit in your home to the dismay of a very disgruntled roommate, and... Huh. Case in point. And that's kind of the whole point of the hardcore genre, is to create utter chaos in the pit. And as we get into Religious, the intensity is still there, but... Now we're getting into tunnel vision territory. It's still good, but this was very clearly not supposed to be taken in in one sitting. But that's okay, because to alleviate the boredom that I'm sure you're feeling as well, here's a collage of puppies with battle jackets. Enjoy! I will say this at the very least, okay? When it comes to Angry Boys Be Angry Awards, these guys take the fucking cake. I don't know what he's shouting about, but it's very clear that someone took a shit in his hardcore Fruit Loops this morning, and he's not happy about it. To be fair, I'd be pretty pissed too if they didn't do it to the Shreddies to add some fucking flavor. And that attitude continues onward into Modern Slave, Pride Kills, and Propaganda. The latter especially, more so than the rest of the songs on this album, knows to just get in and bolt before starts giving you pet names. And as we get into the last song on the album, Last Path, it becomes pretty clear that I of course did predict this outcome. None of the songs on the album really changed up anything. This was the same song over and over again throughout the entirety of the 40 minute run length.
But then this shit came on. Is he having a stroke? Uh, yeah, anyway. yeah, I mean, props are finally doing something different, but why does it sound like a Rob Zombie Skrillex collab? In the worst way possible? But for real, overall, while the album changes about as much as the toxicity of League of Legends players over the years, I can't really fault them for that. That's what the fans want. And while I personally don't think that makes for a great album, these guys at the very least knew to not fuck around for too long. You see, if you are doing anything that doesn't change at all, then at the very least you can do is understand that going over 40 minutes is more sinful than a grindcore band writing ballads. Just get in and get out. You do not need more than 40 minutes. Unlike Sting. Tantric sex. Would you explain to our students who are, <laughs> after all, here to learn? If we had seven hours, I would demonstrate, but um... So in the end, good on you for this one. While I won't sit through the entire album again, I do feel like any hardcore kid with so many daddy issues they'll start karate kicking the pit will enjoy this entire album. So, by all means, pick it up if you think you'll enjoy it. 12 out of 15, because that's the KD ratio of the kid on the album cover, and he's fucking piss. Oh, oh god. Oh, okay, I think, I can't see. Hey, okay, I think, I'm well rested now, I think I can do the review. Wait, are, are you serious right now? Dude, we just wrapped up, it's over. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, thank God. In that case, I think I'm just gonna. When he wakes up, I'm deleting him. So that was Eternal Struggles Year of the Gun. What did you think of the album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you now tempted to do karate kicks in the pit? If so, let me know in the comments down below so we can all laugh at your ass. <laughs> By the way, say hi to your mom for me. It's been a while. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, ring that fucking bell, or a karate kid will come to your neighborhood. And I'll see you in the mosh pit next time. Have a good night.